Thank you guys for joining us this evening. Uh, we really appreciate you guys taking your time to get further education. Um, today, the topic at hand is compression garment solutions for lipedema. And LNR is really excited to be hosting and sponsoring um, this webinar with Leslie Keith and Veronica Rodriguez. Um, some excellent presenters here, bringing great um, education to you guys tonight. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to them here in a second to introduce themselves. Um, but just keep in mind throughout the presentation, there is the Q&A box at the bottom, not the comment and chat fat function. So in that Q&A, that's where you're gonna drop your questions in throughout the presentation. And then when we get to the end, we'll be able to answer those. If any are pertinent to answer right away, we will try to get those addressed um, immediately within the context. Um, just keep in mind though, to keep the questions relevant to the topic, uh, we will skip any questions that are maybe off topic, but Leslin and Veronica very kindly offered to put their email addresses in to be able to answer any questions afterwards if you'd like. So that will be towards the end of the presentation. So with that, I will hand it over to Leslin and Veronica. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Thanks for uh, supporting us and, and being interested in lipedema. Um, Veronica and I love to talk about this. And just a little bit about us. I am uh, the president of the board and director of research for the lipedema project. I am a lymphatic specialist. So I treat lymphedema and lipedema. And I have uh, done some research um, with diet and lymphatic disorders, and I've written two books. And I will also tell you that I'm also an instructor for close training and consulting, and was lucky enough just to see Lindsay just yesterday teaching a class in the Chicago area and showing her uh, LNR products. So um, I, I really, uh, really like those products. So, um, and then here's Veronica. Hi everyone, I'm Veronica Rodriguez. I'm a physical therapist and a CDT, that is Case Lee Smith trained. Uh, I do consulting uh, and I'm a lipedema simplified coach. I love, love, love sharing information and collaborating with colleagues. And it's great to be here with you, Leslin, presenting with LNR. Um, thank you. Uh, the information uh, we're providing today is for educational purposes. So please know that it does not trump uh, what your healthcare provider is providing for you. Um, it is important that you continue your relationship with them and really discuss information learned here and open up dialogue for your health care. So Today, we're gonna to talk about what is lipedema in today's agenda, why to use the compression for lipedema, contraindications, basics for garments, post-surgical garment use, what compression level is right for you, figuring out um, the type of different products or alternatives that you can utilize for care, and knowing what the pitfalls and challenges are, and there are a few, but they can be overcome. Different creative applications. We're gonna cover case studies where we can really look at a client and then decide what kind of compression is available for them. And then they'll, we'll conclude with some resources for you. So we wanted to do some polls. Oh, go ahead, Veronica, this is you. No, that's oh, right. That's <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Uh, definitely, we're going to have a few questions today on the poll, and we think it's it kind of uh, fun and interesting to know where we are as a group. So today's uh, poll question is, in what capacity are you here today? Are you a healthcare provider, a compression provider, a lipedema patient, a family member, who is caregiving for a lipedema person or other? Or are you just curious? <laughs> and, and you can answer all that apply. So you might be several of these things. So be, feel free to check any that apply. I see me still trickling in. I'll let them take another minute here to just get a few more answers in. Hmm. 
All right. So you should see this now. We're at about 95% healthcare professionals, 22% fitters or compression providers, 1% lipedema patients, 2% lipedema family member or caregiver, and then 2% other. Okay. <laughs> well, hello, everyone, and we're really glad you're here. Okay. And then, Lindsay, do you take that off or each person has to exit off their screen? Um, we, you, it should be canceled okay. now, so you should be able okay. to move forward. There you go. Okay. I'm, I'm learning the technology here, but I, I, I really appreciate knowing who our audience is here today. So thank you, everybody. Yeah. So then let's just talk briefly about what is lipedema before we get into, you know, the, those compression garment solutions. And so um, the most obvious, very visual symptom of lipedema is that disproportionate and symmetrical deposition of fat to the lower half of the body. Um, you can see with this woman in the picture here that she seems to have a different body with her trunk compared to her lower body. And also you can have the upper arms affected as well. I've seen some people with it actually affected all the way to the wrist. Um, and it seems to have an onset, it's, it's almost exclusively with women and it seems to happen during those periods where the hormones are changing. So puberty, pregnancy, and perimenopause seem to be that um, time of, of its onset and or exacerbation, but it doesn't have to occur then, it just seems most often it does. It seems to have that comorbidity of some non-pitting edema, hypersensitivity and pain, so especially to the areas that have lipedema. So when this picture here, you, you see on her lower body, um, very uh, innocuous type of touch will be um, very painful to a person with lipedema. And easy bruising, um, the bruises just, just appear and you have no idea of the, of the cause. There's gonna be skin and tissue changes usually in the later stages of lipedema. You can see um, that this woman here, her skin looks a little bit lumpy, but relatively smooth. But later you can get those um, hard fatty nodules. The cuffing is when the fat abruptly stops at the ankles or the wrist. And so you get that cuff there. And then that uh, mattress-like corrugated like a, appearance when um, the fat gets really lumpy. And traditionally, it's also been um, very um, non-responsive or very limited response to traditional weight loss met methods like very low calorie, low fat dieting or intense exercise. And just looking at the stages of lipedema, um, this is not all the same person and you can look very, very different in each stage, but we're, um, uh, so there can be a lot of varieties of presentation and they're all stage one. Um, but I'm just giving you a, like the general appearance and that progression of the condition. Doesn't mean it will progress, but it certainly can. Um, and so stage one, you really have more of a smooth skin, but you can see a little bit of texture to that stage one picture. Um, and then stage two, you're starting to see that lumpiness, the, um, the, the mounds or the um, encapsulated mass, masses of fat. Stage three, more thickening, um, more tissue changes, the nodules um, starting to get lobules. And in stage four, your lipo lymphedema. So you have lipedema combined with lymphedema. And the types that we generally talk about are referring to where on the body the fat is deposited. So in type one, it's the buttocks, the hips and the buttocks. Um, and in type two, it extends down to the knee. Um, and uh, in type three, it goes all the way to the ankles. Type four is in the arms. And again, type four doesn't usually happen in isolation. You can see that this one is type four in the arms along with type three. Um, and then type five is, she definitely has an effect in the hips and the thighs, but the calves tend to be the worst of the, uh, of the expression of the lipedema in the legs. 
So why use compression for lipedema? Um, compression is a very effective tool. It can help decrease pain by providing a gradient of pressure, and we'll get into that a little later. It can improve lymphatic and vein pumping function using the calf pump method where the calf has compression that aids in the return of the lymphatic and vein fluid. Compression can also soften uh, fibrosis and scar tissue formation. Um, it decreases inflammation. It can work very effectively in decreasing the refill of the limb area after manual lymphatic drainage. It improves mobility with tissue support. Many of the lipedema um, clients have decreased tissue structure, the weight of it and gravity really can make it painful. So having compression being used as a supportive scaffolding can be very, very effective. Uh, shaping the limb during the reduction phase is very important. As they start reducing and fibrosis decreasing, you can help shape that limb and reduce the, the fluid volume, as well as shape the limb for um, the maintenance phase of compression. Volume reduction will typically be less compared to lymphedema, but you will definitely see some really positive changes. In lipedema, there is no cure, but the compression is a tool to help move things along. Mm -hmm. There are some contraindications to using compression. Um, usually you don't have just lipedema in isolation. You quite often can have other conditions as well. So you wanna uh, use caution. Um, we're mostly healthcare providers here. So you're using caution on who you're recommending for compression if they have contraindications. It might be good for the lipedema, but not so good if they have arterial insufficiency. So we're already having difficulty getting blood down to the um, uh, periphery and you don't want to restrict that even further. If they, um, if they have a hypertension, not necessarily a contraindication, but if it's not controlled, um, wearing compression, particularly waist high compression can make that blood pressure go up e even higher. And infection, we don't want to promote um, the spreading of that infection, but also quite often, if they have an active infection, uh, a skin or tissue infection, we're talking like cellulitis or erysipelas, um, that that active infection usually is quite painful and putting compression on over that will be pretty painful. Um, but there will be a point where they can start wearing their compression again, as long as their um, treatment is working um, to control the infection. And uh, again, um, a, a blood clot, DVT, or having CHF, congestive heart failure, does not mean you can't have compression, but if it's not diagnosed and not controlled, um, then that would be contraindicated. So definitely for um, these two conditions, we can have compression, but it's got to be diagnosed and controlled. And then using a lot of caution, if there is um, some allergies um, that they have to the different um, components of the compression material, you gotta make sure that you're um, dealing with that. And if they have reduced or lost sensation, so then um, they're not gonna know if a garment is causing pain or discomfort or um, rubbing or something like that. So um, you wanna make sure you use caution with that to make sure that you're not creating um, issues, skin damage, stuff like that. So compression um, therapy is an application of pressure to a limb area by external pressure. The garment itself is as individual as you are. Some people may find that one type of garment is more comfortable or applicable than another, and it is not a one size fits all. It's really critical to understand the different types of compression, how to use it, how to layer it, and the purpose intended for that garment for better management of the individual. And I think it's very critical to also ask your clients, what is their lifestyle? What is their 
range of motion and really take those factors into account. So there are a variety of uh, styles of compression that can be used individually or piecemeal together to make a whole system for your clients. We have knee highs, thigh highs, waist highs that are pantyhose, leggings, capris, and biker shorts, arm sleeves that are individual to one limb, or you can use both at the same time. There are different garments available. Uh, trunk compression, it can be very helpful in facilitating abdominal um, node stimulation, but there's also camisoles available, tank tops, crop tops, and different compression bras. So here's the next question. Are circular knit products beneficial for lip edema? That's a good question. <laughs> I, I think early the answers on, are coming in. <laughs> I think early on when uh, I just became um, a certified CLT, um, I would have answered this one differently. <laughs> so getting a couple more trickling in. All right, we're gonna end the poll and share the results. It looked pretty mixed. 41% said yes, 34% said no, 25% said not sure. All right, let's hey. <laughs> So, oh, I'm gonna shut the poll question there. And so circular knits. Uh, they offer a type of compression that is made by a circular loom and it's fitted like a tube. This compression offers more elasticity um, and less structure or stiffness and there's different applications for it. It tends to be easier to get these type of garments on or off because of their flexibility and it may not require an assistive device or a caregiver. Flat knits are compression knit uh, fabric garments that are made and knitted together. They offer the tissue support in the structure, and yet it still allows for flexibility and joint movement. Usually it's custom, and it has a higher containment than the circular knit, which means more structural support. Um, sometimes it can be more comfortable. And it can be easier to don, especially with aids if needed. A good option uh, for lobes, fibrosis, and ankle cuff is the flat knit because of the direction of the fibers also help lift the tissue and move fluid. And uh, there are lots of fashionable options now available. We're all about fashion too. <laughs> But I, I would just add that, um, you know, with that description of circular knit and flat knit, um, well, is circular knit good for lipedema, Veronica? Well, yes. I think it can be an adjunct tool in the treatment and understanding how each one is applied is the biggest factor and observing what it does to your client's tissue. Is it causing a tourniquet or not, or other problems that you need to be aware of? So there's a lot of variables, but we're not done yet. So inelastic garments, they're a stiffer fabric and have Velcro tabs. And it's used to adjust to the fit and shape of the limb. And it's used primarily in the reduction phase, but it can use in other creative ways too. And we'll talk about it later. It offers tissue support against gravity because it's an ongoing force 
and the stiffer fabric helps counter the effects of gravity. Uh, compression itself helps soften fibrosis. And when it's used in conjunction with a swell pad, foam, or cherry pit pads, it can be even more effective in softening hardened tissue in the advanced stages of lipedema. Um, it can be loosened for nighttime wear as compression. And this is where it can also change in use and still be very effective and safe. And uh, custom uh, garments are available in unusual shapes and larger size limbs. So let's look at those day versus night compressions. Uh, some garments can be used for both, but some are really more suitable for overnight meeting while you're sleeping compression. Um, so in, in generally, especially if you have lymphedema along with lipedema, you wanna wear up to 24 hours a day, have compression on. Generally you can have maybe a couple hours off for hygiene and, and stuff like that. Uh, maybe you're using the pool, stuff like that. But generally we're staying compressed night and day when we have lymphedema along with lipedema. Um, and then some garments have the, the special features that really allow them to be safer for the tissue, to be much more effective and be much more comfortable when we use them for while you're sleeping overnight. So you wanna have that padding that's gonna protect the bony prominences. We don't wanna cause any areas of constriction or skin injury. We wanna still have that stiffness. Um, not only does that um, prevent the garment from wrinkling, rolling or constricting, but we want it to have stiffness in order to keep the, the fluid down. And I'm gonna move my <laughs> controls here so I can see what it says on the slide. You want it to have adjustability. So um, especially if you've been wearing, for instance, your inelastic Velcro garment during the day, you wanna be able to loosen it a little bit for at night when your legs are elevated and you don't need as a firm of compression. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's talk about those post-surgery applications because um, the, one thing that women with lipedema do, they might do a debulking type surgery, a lipectomy, and they might do a liposuction. And so, um, there is garment considerations for um, post-surgery and um, really you want to um, you want to follow the guidelines of the surgeon if they have them but there are some special um, considerations that are really going to promote healing post-surgery so you want to think about how gravity is always acting on your body once you stand up you're going to have that pull and so we want to um, it's gonna naturally want to draw that fluid um, to your lower legs. So we wanna have a way that's going to support that. So we keep the fluid circulating and then promoting your healing. So using that muscle pump with gentle movements like walking um, along with congestion that can really help both pump the, the lip fluid but also the venous blood, the, the venous return. And this is gonna decrease um, your post-surgical swelling, but also help with uh, preventing a uh, blood clot or a DVT. Using elevation and um, pneumatic pumps can also help. And, and when you look at some of those padding garments, you can even use that inside of the pump sleeve so that can promote that. Again, we're not being super aggressive with those kinds of interventions post-surgery or make sure you have good healing. And as I said before, really consulting with your, the surgeon to see if they have any compression guidelines. Sometimes they don't, but sometimes they're very specific. Um, it might be that you need to start with circular knit. This could be one of the applications of circular knit. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's can generally as lighter compression and maybe the um, right after surgery, and as soon as you're able to start applying compression, it may need to be something that is lower compression level and starting with a circular knit, but it may um, progress to using flat knit. Um, may, your, uh, maybe you need to have something that is inelastic Velcro closure so you can adjust around um, surgical wounds and stuff like that. 
Um, so as that's healing, it can be easy to apply dressings if necessary and still um, be able to put on your uh, inelastic garment. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, here on the left-hand side, uh, you can see uh, in myself, I recently had some uh, surgical interventions. And um, I also live with lipedema and lymphedema and venous disease. So uh, my lymphatics are compromised. And I find that in the picture on the left, it, uh, obviously there were, you can see a lot of dimpling, a lot of mattress-like appearance on top of inflammation from surgical intervention. On the middle slide, you can see the uh, tribute uh, wrap uh, garment and on the right-hand side, the ready wrap full leg. Um, utilizing both of those have uh, been very comfortable and effective. And I wanna show you the difference in just 24 hours of wear just overnight. If you look at the garment, uh, the leg on the left, you can see the channels from the, uh, the compression garment at night, but you'll start seeing the mattressing appearance starting to decrease. On the left-hand side, you can really see quite effectively how the leg is decongesting from inflammation and a lot of wrinkling in the skin and softening. Um, Compression is a wonderful tool in just managing that and being comfortable enough to wear it in the daytime and nighttime keeps that compression consistent so it can be more effective in moving lymphatic fluid and venous return. I just, I should just, uh, just to clarify the picture on the far left, that's before using any compression. And then she shows the compression in the middle picture. And then the picture on the right is after 24 hours yeah. with the um, right leg using the tribute and the left leg using the ready wrap. Pretty, pretty good results in 24 hours. I said it backwards. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So I just clarifying that so everybody can tell. I was just looking at the picture, but yes, the legs yes. is different. Yeah. yeah. So now we have another poll. We have another poll. What physics law tells us about the amount of compression on a limb uh, by uh, to <laughs> effects on the limb by the compression garment? <laughs> And, and you can tell that um, Veronica got a little bit silly on this one. And I, it's nice to know that everybody knows what the law is. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, that, that's good. I don't have to uh, go into too much detail about it then. But we'll continue. <laughs> All right. So compression for decongestion. Uh, versus uh, um, versus self-management. Using the law of Laplace, that physics law states that tension on a wall on a cylinder is dependent on the pressure and the contents of, of the contents and its radius. This applies to compression garments in that how you use your compression and layering can really affect it. Using the law of Laplace with compression, you are taking into account the pressure of the garment, the width of the garment, the, the density of the garment, and its layering use. But even uh, most importantly, compressing at the smaller radius of the foot, for example, is going to be a firm, gentle pressure. And compression further up a longer limb is going to be a pressure gradient and not as tight because it has to slowly lift and move the fluid up against gravity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and um, different, um, during your lifetime of dealing with a chronic condition, you're going to use all different types of compression. So when you're helping your patients with this, maybe if they've never used any compression before, you're going to start with maybe a lighter pressure gradient 
um, and maybe something that's circular in it and not so stiff as flat in it. But then it, as their needs change, as their uh, body changes and their tolerance for compression changes, you might use a variety of other types of compression garments. They might be the uh, inelastic adjustable garment. It might be flat knit. They might continue to use circular knit, but maybe of a, of a stronger compression level. And um, so it's, it's really um, varied and dynamic. It's every individual is gonna be different. So you're really looking at their, um, their preferences, their tolerances, and really what needs to be compressed and, and how um, they're able to actually get it on and get it off. What kind of support do they have for that? So we're really looking for what is the compression that they're willing to wear. Um, and sometimes the willingness to wear it really comes with a being properly fitted and um, therefore comfortable. So making sure that they're getting that best garment for them where they're at right now with their condition. So in the decongestive phase, um, we're, we're um, during that intensive phase of treatment, we're probably using compression bandaging because they're coming in very frequently for treatments and we're, um, we're shaping the leg, we're remodeling the legs. Um, and so we're, we're gonna use compression bandaging because that can be customized every time the compression bandages are applied. But we might also find it necessary to use things like the inelastic adjustable garments during that decongestion phase, during that intensive phase, the therapist might be applying those types of garments during that phase as well. Um, and then also looking at the different padded foam garments, the, the bandage liners, such as the caricia. So it's, a, it's something that um, can go on to the, the limb and then you apply bandaging over it. So again, something that can use during therapy and the intensive phase, which is gonna be different from the self-management phase. You can definitely use any of the intensive phase garments um, during that time, but we're typically also looking at something that, that might be less bulky than compression bandaging. Um, so maybe we might be uh, looking at circular or flat knit garments, something that looks more like um, you know, clothing and active wear and stuff like that. Um, and, but then also looking at what am I gonna use for nighttime? And so that is, is typically gonna be using that the foam type um, garments for a night. We could also use the adjustable elastic, um, inelastic garments as well, but those things that are specifically designed for overnight wear. I don't know why it has that animation right there. That was interesting. <laughs> but then let's, when you're also looking at the, the choices, you're balancing the cost with the effectiveness of the garment and really considering it as an investment in the health of your client. Um, so your balancing is, is an off the shelf, usually circular knit garment going to be good for this patient? Is that the optimal garment for this patient given their situation or would they be much better served with a custom garment? And so we're gonna talk about various presentations of, of patients and what you might choose for that person. Also be thinking about ease of use. If they can't get it on or they don't have someone to help them get it on, it's not going to be useful. So um, thinking about how um, easy is it gonna be for them to use? And if it has some challenges, how are we gonna meet those challenges to get them on? And how comfortable is it? Um, quite often the flat knit custom or the inelastic garment kind of becomes custom is gonna a lot of times be uh, much more comfortable than a circular knit. But if the circular knit can also meet that comfort need, then that might also be a, a good garment. And how durable is it? So how often does it need, be, need to be replaced? And um, you know, I have many patients that will tell me that they want to go to um, a department store who, or a pharmacy that offers, you know, on their shelf, they have some very inexpensive um, knee highs that they can just get get the store by themselves. It's it's sized by shoe size, and they're just going to get that. And, um, but then they have to be replaced every month. 
because they're not, they just don't have the durability. And so wouldn't it be much more cost effective to get something that is much more higher quality that then maybe can last four to six months um, be much more appropriate. And then how effective is it? Quite often those very inexpensive garments that you get at the drugstore um, are not very effective uh, at controlling the, the swelling, uh, at controlling um, the fibrosis or the pain or whatever you're using the, the garment for. And so again, that, that's really not worth um, the money, even though it is less expensive. It's not meeting, meeting your client's needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna talk just briefly about those compression classes. These uh, garments can be um, very um, um, strong even and very supportive and really address those tissues, even though they might have very light compression, they're still gonna be very, very effective. And so um, we're looking at the, the general classes and, and every company might be a little bit different, but the general compression classes are different for circular knit versus flat knit. So we put these on here um, to, to see what you would generally see um, listed um, to describe the product. And they're all done in millimeters of mercury pressure. And so subtherapeutic is less than class one, compression class one. And so that is gonna be typically, it could be listed as eight to 15 millimeters of mercury or 15 to 20. So it's less than class one and that's generally in a circular knit. But then we get to class one and the circular knit is much more elastic than flat knit. And so it's gonna be 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury, but the flat knit tends to be stiffer. And so it doesn't need as strong of a millimeter mercury compression. So class one for flat knit is 15 to 21 millimeters of mercury generally. And the same thing for class two, 30 to 40 versus 21 to 32 and class three, 40 to 50 versus 34 to 46. Um, class four, we generally don't use with lipedema, um, even if they are, you know, a, a stage four and have a lot of uh, swelling, we generally are not doing class four. We're going to talk about some other creative ways of getting the appropriate amount of compression and support for those tissues. Um, without going to such high levels of, of compression. So how do you figure out what is the right compression for you? And I was recently at a um, support group meeting and one of the therapists there said this saying, and I know it's probably someone uh, famous put that together, but I thought it was a good thing to keep in mind. If it's too tight, it's not right. If it's too loose, it's a of no use. So we're trying to find that just right compression for each individual. And so um, some tips for doing that is the right amount of compression and proper pressure gradient, meaning it's firmer distally and going lighter as it goes proximal, is going to help with that venous and lymphatic return and help manage the lipedema symptoms, whether it's keeping the fluid um, reduced, um, uh, reducing the pain, reducing the fibrosis, whatever it is, the symptoms you're trying to manage with it. So it's, it's that right amount of compression is controlling those symptoms, but we also have to balance it with comfort and ease of dawning and stuff like that. So maybe we have to um, not control those things as good as we want in order to allow this product to be used. Um, and so for that reason, a lot of times I will start with a lighter compression level um, to someone who's new to compression. So particularly um, when you're first getting treatment for lipedema and you have a lot of hypersensitivity and pain, then you're going to be at that lighter end um, using a circular knit probably um, with maybe even sub-therapeutic levels to start out and get you used to the compression. And as that inflammation and that pain goes down, then we can um, increase the compression. And sometimes light compression may be enough. There may be not any um, lymphedema development developing yet. Maybe you don't really see visible signs of swelling. So that light compression can help with the pain. It can help with managing fibrosis. Um, so maybe you don't have to go any higher. So we're, we're trying to find that right amount of compression that's going to manage their symptoms. 
So, and especially as we saw that comparison of those compression levels, if, if it is more suitable for them to use a flat knit garment, then um, that um, means that they don't have to have as high of a compression for that reason as well, because the garment is very stiff and it's going to help contain and support their tissues without using a lot of compression. So here we have the different stages and compression uh, suggestion, garment suggestion. So here we have um, a client with a stage one and some uh, thoughts and suggestions would be the uh, EcoSoft. Uh, EcoSoft. I'm sorry, EcoSoft. <laughs> Thank you. Um, compression uh, class one circular knit 20 to 30. Textured fabric garments where it can grip the tissue and as they move uh, and walk, it'll, uh, it'll give a soft tissue stretch. Uh, the ExoSoft thigh highs would work very well. Uh, the Ready Wrap and the Rosadol uh, short stretch bandages would be very effective as well. In stage two, and again, this is just one example of what someone can look like in stage two. Um, we're gonna, a lot of times as you go up in stages, you might, might also go up in compression class, but it may be that this person still, compression class one is what they can tolerate. Again, looking at those textured fabrics, a little micro massaging, um, you might use Exo Strong, which is an off the shelf um, flat knit, um, but um, a, a custom flat knit might be used for this patient as well. You can see that she's starting to get some ankle cuffing there. You might start, you start to get a little bit of, of lobe stuff like that. And you need to have that flat knit compression to support that. And because the uh, circular knit tends to want to dive into those skin folds. Um, and it might be that um, you're going to use a lighter compression uh, circular knit and maybe put that ready wrap on over the top of that to give a little bit of extra support, that inelastic adjustable compression. And um, sleeping in a tribute wrap or a tribute night would work and overnight compression if it's needed, um, you know, bandaging is still going to work um, pretty much at any stage. Uh, here we see the progression of lipedema. The cuffing is more uh, pronounced as well as the mattressing appearance of the limb. And you can see uh, the heavier tissue is sagging. And this uh, garment suggestions can happen uh, for better tissue support and uh, decrease inflammation. You can use a compression class one to two circular knit and combine it with a ready wrap on the calf to improve the calf pump mechanism. A compression class one to two flat knit custom would be very appropriate for this individual as well. And you can also use a ready wrap on the calf to do the same calf pump mechanism. Uh, ready wrap with fusion liner and considering also uh, the foot piece, the CT and the foot SL are incredible garments where they're lighter weight and they, um, um, they can support the foot. The um, SL is a thinner model that really can fit in a shoe and help with their mobility as well. Um, and I, I like that one. The Tribute Wrap and uh, the Tribute Nighttime Garment are wonderful for channeling some of the lymphatic flow and the short stretch bandages. Combining circular knit with flat knit, uh, uh, um, alternating and inelastic is very beneficial. And you can even add on the inelastic garments, swell spots, uh, cherry pit pads, foam, and additional bandaging as you need to support the limb. And stage four, now you're getting um, a lot of those lobules, you're getting a lot of the skin folds. Um, we pretty much are not going to use any circular knit on this person because it's going to tend to want to dive into those skin folds. 
Um, you might even stop using circular knit at earlier stages if you're getting any of those lobes. So consider that because it does tend to get into those skin folds. Um, so this person, um, definitely the, the inelastic adjustable wrap, like a ready wrap. Um, you can see that now with the lymphedema developing, we really need to have good support on the foot. So consider also one of those foot wraps. Um, this person will need overnight swelling for sh uh, compression for sure, probably also in, in stage three. And so you, getting that tribute wrap um, or a tribute night garment. Um, flat knit garments are really appropriate for this person, but consider um, getting them in pieces. Um, so not just a one piece um, waist high, but going layering those garments with a knee high layered with a um, maybe with a thigh high capri length and a compression shorts. Any combination of those things, you can really um, do that. Um, those layers are going to be easier for the person to get on uh, and might be more comfortable. And then, of course, any of the bandaging techniques that you do is going to be beneficial for this person. Let's look at some of those pitfalls and challenges because we can see from the, some of these pictures. Um, with the presentation done by our colleague, Aidy McKenzie, um, that you can see that constriction that can happen below the knee, it looks like on the anterior ankle. So a garment, it starts rolling down, it starts gathering, and we are not meeting the needs of that person with that garment. So are they too tight? Is it making those deep creases and, and bulges over the top? Maybe not. Maybe this is a circular knit product and it's not appropriate for that person. It wasn't sized correctly. Um, so you wanna make sure that um, you're not causing tissue damage or, or um, uh, not meeting the needs of your patient. Is it too loose? Is it sliding down? Um, is it not staying in place? Um, sometimes if it's too long, it's gonna get the gathering at the joints because it's too long. Or is it too short or your, and your patient is trying to overstretch it to get it to cover everything that they want it to cover and it wasn't built that way. So um, really examining with um, what, what the garment is that your patient has been attempting to use and making sure that you're um, going to be meeting their needs with the garment that you're going to get them. Some different creative applications is, you know, combining things. Now you can combine a, a bandaging system with maybe a Velcro product on a lower leg. Um, here we have a, a flat knit garment with a Velcro product here. Using, um, here's a really neat swell spot that can support lobes and, and cuffs. So combining, um, uh, different garment types along with bandages, mixing and matching brands, um, using, having an alternative use. So an abdominal binder, maybe a typical abdominal binder will fit around someone's thigh very well. Um, so think about using them in different ways than maybe they were originally intended. Um, see what you can do to soften that fibrosis. Do you need to um, buy a, a swell spot or some um, manufactured, or do you gonna do it yourself and, and make them yourself and combining those with garments, using those textured fabrics um, and um, maybe using kinesio taping underneath the garment and or the bandages. So think about um, those different ways that you can be creative and kind of think outside the box. Mm -hmm. So here we have a case study stage one type two. You can see that in this 40 year old female that there are a little bit of a palpable nodules in the subcutaneous tissue, maybe around the knees, you can see a little bit, um, but the skin overall is relatively smooth. Her primary complaint in clinic was mild ache in the low legs, especially at the end of the day, uh, noticing a lot of bruising without cause and this lady had a very active lifestyle and was into sports. The recommended garment for her was a compression class one circular knit. Textured fabric was another type of garment that um, she switched out and she used an uh, inelastic adjustable compression for ease of use. 
especially with her active lifestyle. Also keep in mind, as you're decongesting and wearing your garments, they need to, especially in the inelastic, they may need to be readjusted as you lose fluid volume because they get loose. And this worked very well for her during the day uh, using more flex, uh, flexible garments. And then when she was at her sport activity, she had the tissue support she needed. So in this case study, we have a stage two, three, type three, four uh, client. She's a 50 year old female. Her primary complaint was more bruising and moderate pain in the legs. She was staying, stating that her mobility was decreasing. She had a more sedentary lifestyle, noticing more decrease in range in her legs and strength. And um, she was no longer responding to elevation in her legs uh, for reduction of volume. Uh, skin changes that were happening were uh, having more prominent nodules and irregularities in the tissue. Our compression garment for her uh, suggestion was a compression class one to two circular knit and texture fabric to the waist so we encompass from the foot all the way up. Flat knit, especially custom, was really recommended for her class one to two. And uh, we also suggested overlapping of the inelastic garments for activating the calf pump mechanism. She wasn't able to tolerate further inelastic compression up the limb, um, but this worked well for her and helped. In this photo, in this case study, you're seeing a stage three type two you can see lobule formation, increased hyperpigmentation, heaviness in the tissue, a lot more texture in there, and there's definitely more pain in the large adipose tissue deposits. The skin is folding over, and it's getting harder for this client to walk. And at this stage, it was a really big issue um, to be able to walk more distances using a device and increasing endurance. And compression helped. So for our recommendations for this patient, we recommended foam and swell spots to address the fibrosis in her inelastic garment. A custom flat knit compression class two knee highs where we're layering the knee highs with waist high or capri length. Um, and it helps specifically in giving a little lobule support. Uh, kinesio tape was also used to give a lift to the lobules and then um, using the leggings with an inelastic product really supported the tissue and helped her pain. And then she can participate in therapy more. In this case study, we have stage four type three. Um, it, uh, she was a 68 year old female and um, her progression led her to be wheelchair bound. Her pain was moderate. There was a significant decrease in mobility and she required full support from her caregiver for garment assist because of her decreased mobility and pain. You can see in the photos that there are even further fatty deposits, heaviness in the tissue, other tissue changes and hyperpigmentation. On the photo, you can also see the deep, heavy cuffing. In, um, in conjunction with that, her lymph lymphedema progressed, and she also presented with a hemocid ring staining the venous insufficiency. I'm going to just interject right in here just to say that these are actually two different women, and, and neither one of them is actually Veronica's patient. Um, but I picked uh, the one on the left is a photo of my patient because she was wheelchair bound. She's not actually stage four, um, but you can see with her uh, lower leg presentation that she definitely has venous insufficiency. Um, and so she had some of those descriptions that Veronica was talking about. And the one on the right, that is definitely a stage four. I don't really see venous insufficiency there, but 
um, the, the legs are quite large and I, I would call that a stage four. Yeah, um, I'm reading from my, my notes on my patient, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so uh, garment recommendations, uh, using inelastic compression for definite tissue support. It helps pain, it helps um, fluid accumulation against gravity. It helps in ease in donning and doffing the garment for the caregiver. This way she can have consistent compression and it's beneficial. Uh, compression shorts, if tolerated and are able to get on, are really helpful in continuing that pressure gradient up. Um, and in some cases, definitely there are extension kits and extenders where you can continue with the inelastic compression all the way up the limb to the thighs. Okay, and so just to give you some resources, because even though we're going a little bit over our time here, um, there's just so much more to learn and, and you can't learn everything in, in one short presentation. So I wanted to give you some resources on, on places you can go further to find out more, the Lipedema Project, Lipedema Simplified. We have a couple of Facebook groups. Um, they are limited to just women. It, it could be uh, caregivers, uh, people with lipedema. Um, or therapists, but it's only limited to women. And that's our lipedema simplified support and our keto lifestyle for lipedema. Um, highly recommend that you check out the Lymphatic Education Research Network website. Um, they have lots of resources there as well for um, the uh, patient as well as the therapist. And here's some references that we used in the presentation. Go ahead, Veronica, these are yours. Yeah, um, I, I find that uh, definitely the standard of care for lipedema uh, in the U.S. is very important. Um, there's the best practice guidelines from the U.K., which is very informative and in-depth detail. There was an excellent article by Thomas, Dr. Thomas Wright on compression garments for lipedema and also the best uh, guidelines for the management of lipedema the British Journal of uh, Community of Nursing had it and it was really well done. So I think this is a good foundation to really dive in further and uh, round out the treatment that you're already doing. And just some uh, additional uh, opportunities for learning. Uh, Lipedema Simplified is gonna be offering a free webinar series coming up. And there's actually four webinars in the series, um, but I have the first three up there. It's the first one starting, I believe on September 29th. Um, I'll be talking about uh, differential diagnosis, lipedema, lymphedema, and obesity. Um, we'll be talking then again, again about those uh, mental health issues also. Um, when you have a chronic condition like lipedema, and so Gail Strager will be talking about gentle days and nights with lipedema. You can do this. And Catherine Sayo will be talking about miracles can happen living with lipedema. Are you ready for yours? Um, there is a link um, for, uh, I'll, I'll put that link also in the chat. That's the link for more information to register. We're also having a October event, uh, a virtual event, um, lipedema and lymphedema heart to heart. We'll be um, talking with, experts as well as uh, women who have lipedema and also lymphedema as well. Um, and it's, it's meant to be very collaborative and very interactive. So um, I'll give you the link also for um, more information to register for that event in October. And thank you very much for having us. You can see here our emails you can Get um, contact us later, Leslin at lipedemaproject.org and Veronica at lipedema-simplified.org. Please feel free to contact us. And now I'm, we really wanna to get to your questions. <laughs> yes, thank you both so much. So I'll go through and um, ask the questions and then you guys can decide who's the best to answer it. So what have you done for ankle shelves when using FlatNet? Veronica, do you want to take that? Sure. Um, I like using the custom garment if the client is able to afford it. Um, if not, uh, off the shelf, a uh, flat knit is very helpful. Um, I pair 
compression with making sure that they have their fibrosis worked on so that we can improve lymphatic flow and with the compression, it can continue to decongest. Um, for the ankle shelf also, once they have the flat knit on, I like using the inelastic compression and giving that pressure gradient to bring it up. So I combine fibrosis work, flat knit and inelastic together, especially lower foot and ankle and calf. Yeah, um, I, I think that it, when we have lobes or um, a ankle cuff, using that um, flat knit is gonna be preferred, but quite often you're trying to remodel that um, sculpt it with some compression bandaging first, so it's not such a drastic of a shelf. Um, and I love using the, the support structures in the bandaging so that the swell spots that you can put in there to lift that lobe as you're bandaging it, get that to maybe be uh, less of a drastic of a size change before you're trying to use a garment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And someone, had, um, just to add to that point, they had said silicone insert or other. So I guess maybe just to touch on the silicone insert, if that would be something you would use for the ankle cuff. Um, I haven't used the silicone insert, but I've used swell spots and also a cherry pit pads uh, to help um, break up fibrosis and also do the lift. Leslin, mm -hmm. have you? Well, I've definitely used the silicone as in the silicone band associated with the garment to help oh. hold it in place. But um, uh, I haven't used a lot of that application of uh, the, the silicone, like for reducing for scar management and stuff like that. I haven't done a ton of that, but I think this is really wonderful to combine these things. You're not using just one product in isolation, layering it, combining, um, will many times be more effective. Be creative. I think it's a great idea. Um, so just to touch on this, because this is a question further down, but you just mentioned it again. Someone had asked, uh, what is a cherry pit pad? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> a cherry pit pad is literally a, the cherry pits that are uh, cleaned and dried, and uh, they, they form these small pea size um, hardness, and what you do is you can make your own at home or you can uh, purchase it where they use the literal cherry pit pads in um, a sleeve or a garment shape and you put it inside the inelastic garment or underneath the bandaging to break up fibrosis. Um, it's pretty easy to do it yourself and literally order online cherry pits. And I've used Hypofix. So I measure out the, the length I need around um, the lower ankle cuff or other fibrotic areas. And then you literally put the cherry pits in there and I put another layer of cherry pit of a Hypofix on top. And I form this long roll that I can use on a limb and then I continue with my compression garment. Keep in mind that it's very aggressive and you may only tolerate it for a very short period of time, measured in minutes, not in hours. This can be a very yeah, I, um, aggressive application, yes. Yeah, do not sleep in it, no. <laughs> uh, keep it for a short period of time to soften the tissue and then move on to you know nighttime wear or other flexible daytime wear. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, definitely. So I think to then kind of um, to kind of tag on to what you were saying, how are you balancing the tissue tenderness with compression treatment? I would say that you're starting out with um, with, with your decongestive therapy. You're doing uh, manual of drainage. So you're reducing that hypersensitivity with that, and uh, and then and using light compression to start with, and so you're gradually, you're actually going to do firmer MLD to their tolerance, and um, and then you'll be able to use actually firmer compression to their tolerance too. Veronica, what do you do? So. Um, I utilize other techniques in conjunction compression. 
So uh, other things that I do, I encourage them to get in a pool because it acts like compression on the body. Uh, MLD, manual techniques to open up fibrosis and then take it away with the manual lymphatic drainage. But I also add a more uh, cotton layering uh, and padding within their compression garments uh, for inelastic. And, and that way they can set the tension uh, to fit, but not a tourniquet and the compression because it's uh, thicker and inelastic and it is a wider area covered. It can help with pain and reduce inflammation at the same time. That's what I do. Thank you. Um, so another question, any tips for those patients who present with a significantly larger edematous foot compared to the ankle with regards to the law of Laplace? Yeah. Le um, can I take this one, Leslie? <laughs> so uh, definitely, I'm actually seeing a client uh, with that similar problem. Um, if you have any scars, I would address those scars first because they act like a dam in lymphatic flow. Uh, then we do multi-layer compression, short stretch bandaging. And, and once they're congested and reducing and softening, uh, we move them on to a combination of um, flat knit and inelastic um, compression for the foot and ankle. Be sure to really address any barriers in the soft tissue and work on softening it on the dome of the foot and around the malleoli and start getting the calf pump mechanism working. Let's thinking end. about that, um, I would just say, just thinking about that law of Laplace, you might have to really have to build up the ankle with mm -hmm. some foam product to when it's, you have a really tiny ankle and a really big foot. This doesn't usually happen with lipedema, even with lipo lipid, lymphedema. Um, so, uh, but it is a presentation that you might see, especially with uh, just the lymphedema. And so think about building it up um, with foam so that you are not having a reverse gradient in constriction. Can I also add, you can cut um, a, a fitted piece of foam over the dome of the foot and start shaping it with compression. So definitely, yeah, what Leslie said. <laughs> All right, so do you use compression bandages for stage one and two lipedema? If I need to um, reduce some swelling, yes, but uh, don't always use that in stage one and two. It depends on what you're seeing. If, if they uh, gain 50, 10 pounds from the morning till night, <laughs> um, then we're looking at there, there is some fluid content there that I would wanna use bandages for. But um, if they're very weight stable and you're not really seeing it, then I, I may not. Veronica, what do you do? I, I agree, although I, I have in the past one client that did the short stretch uh, because of financial uh, need. And we worked with her on that until she could save up for the compression garments that was recommended for her. So that's something, yeah. Um, but definitely, um, I typically don't do short stretch, um, but I really get them uh, moving with uh, lighter garments that give them the support they need and they can move forward from there. If they're in a stage two, we're definitely adding some uh, inelastic compression garments, flat knit, or a mix of products so that they maintain and they don't progress to the next level. Thank you. So I know that you guys both agree with this. Someone had commented also the cheap ones, uh, meaning the cheaper stockings that they can find online don't fit properly and do make things worse. And so I know when we talked beforehand, Leslie and Veronica definitely agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another question. Any success getting insurance to cover the cost of compression garments for lipedema? I've had, it's about 50-50. Um, a lot of times there's a letter of me medical necessity um, by the doctor, and then we add it with our treatment notes and submit it. Um, I make sure in my evaluation that when I'm writing the plan of care as a physical therapist, that I write 
recommendations for compression that are medically necessary. And that kind of triggers that payment uh, to help uh, cover the cost of the garment. Leslin? I was just gonna say, when you're talking about that language that triggers, hopefully that it gets reimbursed, you can, uh, all of these companies, the, the uh, lymphedema uh, product distributors that bill insurance, you can, um, they can help you with verbiage to um, make sure that you have the, the appropriate documentation that will increase your ability to get uh, reimbursed. It really depends on the person's plan. Um, at this point, Medicare is not covering uh, garments unless there's an open uh, wound, but um, a lot of the private um, uh, insurances will, but you have, to, it's, everyone is different. You have to meet whatever their criteria are to get it covered. It's, it's a challenge. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, unfortunately. Um, next question, can you further describe mattress-like appearance? So I think you saw in the um, presentation that some of it just, it, it was a uh, lumpy. It wasn't a smooth appearance of that skin. When you're looking at, particularly on the thighs, it can look very lumpy. And so you think of your mattress, it kind of has that corrugated uh, lumpy appearance. Well, it could look like the Tribute, a little bit lumpy with that uh, chip foam construction. So, um, so, so a lot of times that's how the lipidema tissue can look and we call it mattress-like. Thank you. Um, and so can you have lymphedema patients without nodules? Absolutely. <laughs> you can, yeah. 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 Next question. How common is it to treat arm involvement in lipedema either with CDT or compression, and is it effective? I say yes. Um, I have in clinic. And the same principles we use for the lower limb, we also use it for the upper limb. Um, the assessment is basically checking vascularity, range, motion, uh, pain assessment. But um, I have to say the primary caseload that I see is lower leg, but I have had clients. And finding the same tools, like using a um, combination of materials, inelastic maybe if they have heavy work activities that they do and uh, that way they activate the calf pump mechanism or if they're into sports and then nighttime having uh, a tribute wrap so they can sleep comfortably at night and cushion the arm and give it the support they need. Hmm. Leslin? Oh, you, you covered it. And any anything else to add? <laughs> <laughs> Um, how helpful is liposuction for lipedema patients? Shall I take that one? <laughs> <laughs> Having just experienced it, and um, you know, because you know, Veronica has lipedema herself, and she just did that intervention. So yeah. everybody's all different, but Veronica can tell you what her experience was. Yeah, I'm happy to share my experience, and uh, I want to support those who encourage me to do it too, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Um, so deciding on lip lipedema, uh, liposuction is really a personal decision you have to make and you have to weigh many factors, like what are your comorbidities and what is your, your purpose for it? Uh, for myself, I'm, I was finding I had some limited mobility, uh, in moving and was developing a lobule and I wanted to address it immediately now not when I'm in my 70s. I'm a little younger than that now. Um, I find that uh, women who do and follow lifestyle management, and it isn't a one and done thing, that they have much better results, pain is reduced, inflammation is reduced, and they can help shape their limb and their garments better. But uh, the big bonus is the increased mobility also. So that allows me to do other sports and things that I'd like to do in the future. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Can you give some examples of textured fabric brands that you would recommend? Yeah, uh, I, I'll, I'll actually put them in the, the chat. 
if I put something in there, I mean, I've been putting in links and stuff. Oh, I, I wonder if it's been giving it to everybody, if I've just been sending it to the hosts. But <laughs> some different brands are uh, Suzy Zalas. No, it's not typing up. Oh, uh, well, I haven't hit, hit return yet. Um, oh, I'm sorry. And, and Bioflect. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Soledad. Yes, I like those as well. And there's one more new garment that came out. Uh, it's called Elastique. And uh, what's interesting about the garment is it has little beads on the inside of the garment that does fibrotic work. Um, but be aware, it's it can be intense for some people. So knowing when to use it is important. Awesome, thank you. Um, any nighttime wear garments that you would suggest for lip edema? Yes, the Tribute Wrap, it's fantastic. I'll tell you why I like it. I like it because it's soft, it's comfortable, it's cushioned, I'm a side sleeper. I feel like my legs are well supported and when I wake up, it really helps with the decongestion. So that's, that's my experience. Um, I like using that. I've used inelastic uh, compression garments also, a variety of them, including the ready wrap. And you saw the good results in decongestion in just 24 hours. So it works and it can work with foam as well to help shape the limb as you're reducing and uh, preventing um, folds and by building them up and then using the inelastic compression. All right, so the next one, how do you find, how do you handle financial barriers that keeps patients from getting the right compression? I would say um, that um, I, I want to recommend to the patient the optimal garment for them. And now that optimal garment may um, cost more. So um, they need to start from day one, saving for it or looking for what their resources are to get that garment. Um, so I, I want them to reach out to um, family and friends and, and their church or something like that. So um, there, there are people out there that want to help them, that support them. And so, and, and just them, you know, putting uh, $5 a week into a, a kitty. And so starting to save to get that garment. Um, and, and some of them are, are not gonna wanna do that. And so then we'll look at other options, but I wanna at least offer them, this is the, the optimal garment for you. This is, I think, the thing that would work the best for you. And then it's their decision on if they want to pursue that. Um, but there, um, there are ways to, to get the product that's best for them. It's really, like I said in the presentation, it's an investment in their health. So we wanna encourage them to get the optimal garment. Yeah, I, I want to interject to they really need to understand the, the value of different products. And I think, for example, it's my responsibility to say if you have a product that's poor quality and you're replacing it monthly, that total cost is exactly what you actually need. And it's worth looking at lifestyle and like Leslin said, putting away a little bit so you get the right tool to do the right job so that it does it well, there's no tourniquet effect, there's no wear, you get the support you need and they're gonna find, they're gonna reduce quickly when they're in the right garment and combine it with lifestyle management. Absolutely, yeah, thank you. Thank you. What do you think about using pneumatic compression pumps for, lipo, um, limpid, for lipolymphedema patients? Definitely an option that I use because the, the pump can um, be good for managing fibrosis, decreasing pain, as well as when you have bona fide lymphedema happening as well, it's going to help evacuate that fluid. And I really like combining it with um, some of the nighttime garments like the, the Tribute inside um, the, the, the pump garment, depending on you know, what can the, the, the tissues um, tolerate. 
um, what's comfortable for the patient. We shouldn't be causing any pain when we do this, but it, definitely a pump is something that we use with lipedema. Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly, very helpful. And it's an, another tool that is needed in management. Uh, using additional foam also can really help in swell pads um, in addition to the pump. Yeah. Thank you. And then just to add to that, someone else had had a similar question, but it was specifically in regards to pumps for post-surgical lipedema patients. And do you use it at the lowest compression level? Yeah, now you have to be very careful um, post-surgically. Veronica, did you use a pump post-surgically? Not right away. I couldn't tolerate it at all. Now I can, and I'm about two, two months, two and a half months out. So I can tolerate it now very well. I'm moving around very well, um, but too soon post-surgically is not indicated, I don't think, especially when there may be inflammation from the surgery. And then as you reduce, you may tolerate much better. And you should always consult the surgeon first on what they want and understand and have them make sure they understand your intention for inflammation reduction. It may be that uh, compression wrapping or um, using uh, inelastic um, uh, cir uh, circular garments are initially what you want to do to so support the tissue, but you have to be sure that they can tolerate it right away, and that you know they're he once their healing process is beginning, they'll be able to tolerate more. Thank you. Um, so stage two and three garment suggestions from the presentation. Someone had asked in regards to those two, isn't circular knit um, going to slide down or into the crevices under the lobules and bind? Yeah, yeah. So when you're, you're seeing someone after they've been through the, the intensive decongestive phase, you probably use compression bandaging and they still have those deep crevices and, the, and those larger lobules you can't really use a circular knit. You're gonna to wanna to use something that's stiff like a flat knit. And so when we show you the presentations of, of those patients, these are people that haven't had treatment. And so they are probably, hopefully, not gonna still look like that post-treatment. So that is a consideration that post-treatment, the, the, uh, the crevices and the, the skin folds and stuff might, might not be as severe. Um, but that um, when, when they are, and I saw someone who just posted in the chat about, you know, what can you do? How do you prevent the garment from slipping into those places? It's really, it's done with a flat knit. When you have um, those deeper folds, um, it, you need the flat knit that stays stiff and it doesn't go into those crevices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With case study number three, did you go directly to the custom compression garment with the swell spot, or did you do CDT first, then transition into the compression garments? So, and, and you have to keep in mind too, that none of these pictures were actually of Veronica's patient. I tried to pick pictures that were, that um, looked like her description. All of her people, she did CDT with first, correct? Yes, absolutely. And intensive education on a lifestyle management with nutrition and also exercise and learning how to do the technique at home as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that leads really well into this next question then. So what are the top three resources you provide to your patients for education and management? Hmm. <laughs> You want to take Definitely. that, Veronica? <laughs> a lot of the references that I we've shared with you is the ones that I also give to my clients. I also, uh, um, regarding lipedema simplified, learn, um, uh, definitely looking at um, our co-host here who has a website with great information on nutrition, ketogenic nutrition to decrease inflammation, um, as well as um, talking about the Lipedema Practice Act, uh, the, the, the practice uh, standards of practice, 
where that can be a good education tool and having them slowly learn bit by bit and knowing that there's hope, that there's things that they can do for themselves and there are things that they can research and look into additional uh, uh, conjunct, you know, adjunct uh, ther type of therapies to help them manage their condition lifelong. Thank you. Um, so one question, I'll answer this one. Will there be CEU credits available with the presentation? We don't have CEU credits available for this presentation, but if you are LANA certified, uh, please email marketing at us.lrmed.com and we can provide you a certificate to, uh, certificate to present to LANA and they will put that towards your recertification. Um, so that is something to keep in mind there. Um, we also asked, uh, had people asking if we'll have the webinar recorded. The webinar is being recorded currently, and in the next one to two weeks, it will be posted on our website at the link that I put in the chat box, and you'll be able to access it there. We'll be sending an email blast post-webinar um, once that is posted so that you'll be able to know when it's available. Um, we did have someone ask if a copy of the PowerPoint presentation is available. Um, I will leave that to Leslin and Veronica. Feel free to reach out to them. Typically, that's mm -hmm. not given, um, but I think that the webinar recording will definitely be helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, would you recommend a compression pump when a patient has only lipedema and not lipolipedema? And so, so it, it depends on the symptoms that are you trying to manage because a pump will be very useful for, <clears throat> for managing fibrosis if it's present, for managing pain if it's present. Um, so, and um, research in the last two years has shown that there is uh, a component of edema with lipedema. And so even if they haven't developed lymphedema, there is edema in those tissues. And so it can be beneficial for also for the edema management. Yeah, thank Absolutely. you. Um, what can be the average frequency and duration of the MLD treatment for lipedema? Is it typically two to five days a week or um, for four weeks or a few months? Um, so specifically looking at stage two, um, that example that you shared. And, and that and Veronica and I might be uh, different in that. What's your recommendation, Veronica? Well, definitely the gold standard is a higher frequency. And it's for me preferred, but the reality is um, I'm real limited in the outpatient clinic where I'm at as far as frequency. A lot of times I see clients two times a week more often, three times a week infrequently. So that means that when we're in the clinic and there is also a limit on time, that education is very important, getting them in understanding their condition, teaching them MLD, recommending the appropriate compression and recommending the value of it for their long-term management. I wish I could see them at a higher frequency of like, you know, five to six days a week get them decongested in the first two weeks, and then taper down. Leslie? <laughs> and and I, I definitely, I have the opportunity of being in private practice, so I could do it at the frequency that I thought was appropriate. And so I like to keep the intensive phase very intensive and high frequency. And so it would be four to five times a week um, for uh, however many weeks that I needed it, typically for um, the, it's going to be fewer weeks for the lower stages and um, more weeks for the um, higher stages of lipedema. But I do think that um, the more frequent visits, particularly if you are using bandaging, it needs to be very frequent. If you are using uh, for like stage one and possibly stage two and you're not bandaging, you're just using a garment, then I would, I would do perhaps three times a week. Um, and then they had said, just to clarify, with a patient with stage one to two lipedema, you would use Velcro inelastic versus short stretch for reduction? Um, I, and, and it really varies per person. But I mean, when you're looking at someone who's particularly stage one and you're not seeing a lot of, of volume, you're not seeing a lot of edema, then I wouldn't necessarily use a Velcro product at all. But 
is say that person has a comorbidity of venous insufficiency and I have a lot of edema associated with it, um, then I, I might use a Velcro product there. So uh, that'd be very patient dependent. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with Leslie. Go ahead. And if for stage two, it could be a progression. So you really need to look at, you know, do they have chronic illness, diabetes? Do they have MS? Do they have other conditions that are also inflammatory? And that needs to be addressed. Next question, um, and we'll wrap up here shortly. Um, is stage one lipedema similar to stage one lymphedema, where it may be spontaneously reversible and patients report minimal swelling in the morning that increases throughout the day? Wow. That's a long question. <laughs> yep, and that might be another oh. webinar or maybe reaching yeah. out to you each individually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that um, there's some recent information on that where they, where they actually have some imaging of women with lipedema and they actually did some imaging of the uh, lymphatic anatomy with early stages. And what they're seeing is dilated lymphatic vessels and some uh, um, increased lymphatic load in those early stages, but in many cases, very um, increased rate of transport of that fluid. And so the lymphatic system is trying to keep up with that at that uh, time. And so using a garment on that person, um, you know, some, some kind of compression on that person is going to support the lymphatics in trying to evacuate that increased load. Um, so I think it can be very valuable in that, that early stage for that reason. And that it, they, you don't see a lot of edema then because it is, you haven't had lymphatic failure yet. It's trying to keep up with it. Then we get into the stage, um, later stage two and in three and in four definitely, then you definitely have lymphatic failure and we need a lot of compression to support that. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. And I will repeat, someone had asked if I could repeat about the LANA uh, recertification um, credits. So in the chat box, I put in our email address, marketing at us.lrmed.com. And LANA actually reviews um, these presentations and they're able to then provide LANA recertification credits with proof of a certificate. So if you are attending this live, you can email marketing um, at us.lrmed.com and we will make a certificate for you, which you can then submit to LANA um, through their primary email address, and they will be able to put that towards future LANA recertification. So hopefully that makes sense. Otherwise, just please email marketing um, email and that's in the chat box, and I can help explain it to you further as well. Um, there are a couple other questions, but they're a little off topic and we are running off, um, running we're, low on time. Yeah, we're, we're quite a bit uh, over our time. Yep, I, I, so did I, think put we'll... our, I put our emails in there. Please email us um, and we'll be happy to, to chat with you further. Yes, definitely. So thank you guys so much. We had so many great questions. Thank you, Leslin and Veronica for your time and all of the extra time this evening. And thank you to all of you that have attended and stuck around. Uh, we appreciate that. And we hope that you all have a wonderful night and maybe can watch this recording later on our website if you want to refer back to it. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you.